welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is Shadow Work Part 2 and it's for love and relationships. Uh, we did Part 1 yesterday, which was a general shadow work reading for the full moon in Scorpio. I would say that the energies of this go from the full moon in Scorpio, which is around the 7th, depending on where you are, probably till the first eclipse that we have on the 5th of June in Sagittarius. Okay, so let's have a looky-see. This is for all signs. I'm using the El Goliath tarot deck. Cha -cha -ching. I know the artwork on it is gorgeous, but uh, the cards are enormous, but it's like principally a deck that you can really use for shadow work, okay? So have a think about, and perhaps have a look at part one. If you look in the well, what comes up for you? What image is conjured up if you were to meditate for five minutes? Oof, there we are. On a well, what would come up for you? Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay. Oof. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I was, you know, yesterday I did this shadow work reading and I was thinking, well, I've done that now, I've scratched the itch. And then today I'm like, nope, there's a part two. Now I know why. By the way, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do hit that wiggly bell because I will be doing random readings like this a lot, I think. Oof. What else do we need to know? Wow. Yeah, it feels like you. Oh, okay, well, one more. It's starting to make my nose run, excuse me. Strange sign of channeling for me, but if you watch my dailies, you will know that if my nose goes, we're on to something. Okay. Ignore it. Ooh. Wow. Okay. They're so big, they can hardly fit on the table, as the actress said to the bishop. Right. There's a lot here to do with fantasy versus reality. The card that actually draws me the most, the first card that I pulled um, for love relationships, for connections that we have with people, is the Major Arcana card of the moon. The Silver Shadow Reflector. That's what it's called in this deck. The moon is yin and it's feminine. It represents Pisces and Cancer astrologically, but of course it's involved with all of us. And it's involved with the female cycle. It's involved with cycles of life and tides and all of those, you know, mysterious things. Such a powerful magnetic pull that the moon has. I'm starting to sound a bit like Yoda. Um, The moon is pulling you here in this relationship scenario towards a form of very fierce clarity. You have to excuse the sanding man down the road. If you watch my dailies, you will know the history with the sanding man who eternally sands a house down the road. <laughs> right. The moon is like a magnetic pull. It feels like there is a mystery about this and you're going to be drawn towards... I want to say solving that mystery, but I don't think it is solving the mystery. I think it's another step along the way. And this is why we're talking about leading up to the eclipses in June. For me, the lunar eclipse in June on the 5th 
is a big dam buster of a revelation. It's a revealer. And then we have the um, solar new moon eclipse on the 21st, I think. It's in Cancer, uh, which is ruled by the moon. And I feel like that's when the lid comes off the box. But in order to get there, okay, we get the Empress. Or in this, the Alchemical Mother. Now, of course, we're talking moons, we're talking cycles, we're talking fertility, we're talking the feminine. It's all here. So think of 28 day cycles. Think of it in terms of moon cycles. We're, we're in a time where we are um, sometimes referred to this as the bouncing ball. You know, there's old fashioned like song programs which used to have the bouncing ball that went along with the words, you know, da 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 and all that stuff. This is like if it were a clock, it would be a moon clock. OK, so you're going from this one, from the new moon to the full moon to the new moon to the full moon or full moon to full moon in this case. That's what this is. This reading is a cycle from full moon on the 7th to the next one that's on about the 5th of June. Check your dates. I'm really bad at dates. OK. Within this energy is three sword cards. We've got the Ace of Swords. I like the Ace of Swords. It's absolute essence of clarity because it's an Ace and because it's a sword, it's a crown chakra. Up the crown chakra card, it's, you know, like if what they call scrying. So if you're looking in a crystal ball or you're looking into the well, and that was part one, it's that thing where you're looking at the water as a psychic, you're looking at it too hard and you're projecting images, okay? Seven of Cups, projecting images, literally projecting images, the tentacles of illusion. I think you may have to look at this in layers. So this is what you do when you're scrying. First of all, there's the false stuff where it's all about yourself and it's all about your own ego. And this is very normal because we're human and we bring that. And it's fine. And it can happen when you're doing a tarot reading for somebody. If you're too much in your own stuff, you will start pulling your own cards. You've probably experienced that. If you are able to accept that as a shadow side and let those clouds drift apart. So imagine that the top of the well is covered in clouds of your own projection. Be calm, be still in whichever way you can and go into that. Um, for me, it's in the back of my teeth. It will have a place for you wherever it is. I can feel this kind of almost like a psychic bite happening. Oh, my nose starts running. I know. There you go. When you get that and the clouds drift apart, what you allow to happen then is for something to emerge. And that's what scrying is something emerging from the deep. There is a deep truth in this relationship that you need to know and it doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship will succeed or fail. It's just that you need to know, okay? I'm going to take a Chuck Spezzano healing card on that Ace of Swords. Well, we like that a lot. I'm going to take a Brian and Wendy Frood as well because the Ace of Swords is this brilliant clarity. It's this, you know, you can't not know it. It's what emerges rather than what you project and the separation between projection and the truth is the shadow work to be done with this relationship. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. For the Ace of Swords, let's have another look at it because, hey, it bears looking at twice these, don't they? They're so beautiful. The Ace of Swords. We get the gift card of success. Okay, so there is a successful clear vision that can be had. But then Chuck's, not Chuck Spezzano, Brian and Wendy Frood, 
the Queen of Shadows. Right, pay attention to the fact she has antlers, okay? This is the masculine. She is feminine, but the mask the antlers represent the masculine. The masculine in terms of when you are uh, in the feminine, when you are up in the masculine and it's unbalanced, which it may be in this case, you may be too up inside your logical brain two up inside your ego, okay? There's a lot of ego in this reading and ego is a shadow side that we all play with continuously. I'm so, must apologize for sniffing the whole time. It's either that or I'm gonna do some really like hootin' tootin' nose blow, which I'm not keen on doing. Okay, and I don't wanna break the flow of the video. So, I'm having another card to counterbalance the Queen of Shadows. Because you've got to overcome your own ego in this. And this is not to do with, you know, the micro of is this person going to call me or are they treating me right and all the rest of it. This is the macro. Oh, I like that. We get Pan, which is the leap of faith. I want one more as well. And the fairy of hope. So from the shadow of hope, this is the fairy of despair, this big fairy here. And flying out in the corner is the Fairy of Hope. The Fairy of Hope comes from the Fairy of Despair. Think of the Fairy of Despair as a deep well, okay? Um, I'm thinking about, there's a poem by Rupert Brooks that says, um, stiller he than a deep well at noon or lovers met. Oh, don't know why, just sharing that with you because it's come to mind, this stillness the person that you're dealing with is a very deep well, um, but so are you, okay? And somehow also what I'm getting here is a really weird vision of two dragons or snakes inside this well, which are intermingling like this all the way up the well, okay? So what you're seeing, if you let it emerge from the deep rather than project it onto it, is the dance and the struggle between two um, beings, entities, spirits, whatever you wanna call them, okay? Right, let's deal with these sword cards. We get the Two of Swords, the Blind Seal, notice the moon above as well. Now the Two of Swords is an interesting card because even in this deck, which is not exactly Rider Waite-ish and traditional, there is always either, um, what do they call it, a blindfold? <laughs> I was gonna call it an eye band. There is a blindfold, there is a sense in which you can't see and there's a sense in which you should not. And what the Two of Swords means is, stop looking out, look within see what emerges. Imagine that you are the well, okay? What emerges? Now you may have to get into meditative state, you may be able to do this like that, you know. For me, I mean it's not really much possible at the moment, but my greatest epiphanies came when I drove a van. I know, I used to drive a van really badly, now and again for work when I had to and they made me. Whenever I drove that van and I was just like, it was like some big man van, you know, gear stick was about that long. And the handbrake, I remember the handbrake, it was practically you know, like this. But whenever I was driving that van like this, I'd get really good epiphanies. So it is what it is for you. You don't have to like, um, and you know, swing a gong and do the incense and all that, unless you want to, or build an altar. Do it however you want to. You can do it watching TV. You can do it any way you like, but become your own well. Let this truth emerge. It's an ugly truth for some of you, but it's put your ego to one side, okay? Be willing to not look out, be willing to not see. Um, it's like in um, Oedipus, the Greek play, Sophocles' play, Oedipus. The person who can see the most is Tiresias, the blind prophet, okay? We have the Three of Swords, the bleeding raw heart. 
Now, it's got this heart with three swords. It's in a kind of a bell jar. God, it's absolutely amazing. This artwork is incredible, isn't it? The Three of Swords is a perceived betrayal. There is a third sword in this scenario. I don't at the moment know what it is. You don't need to know what it is. You just need to feel the discomfort of it being there. And I'm sure that that will emerge in June if there are 3D facts that you need to know about. I don't necessarily feel that it's a third person in the relationship, but uh, I'm not ruling it out either. I'm just saying there is a third sword. Now, interestingly, we then get the, the lion and the cobra, strength. Interesting battle. Now, to me, a lion and a cobra is almost an equal fight. So do you remember in my vision that we had a few minutes ago of these two dragony creatures fighting in the well? Dancing, fighting, whatever. I feel like that infinity symbol at the bottom is part of that dance and also I feel like it is equal but of course these creatures are so very different. You could, there could be fire signs involved with this because obviously this represents Leo. Snakes for me represent fire but I'm also getting air and of course we had Pisces, Cancer and Scorpio with the moon card anyway so... Look, we then have judgment, the transcendence. This bear is coming up. You can see it from the bubbles, okay? It's like, boom. That's the knowledge you're going to gain by not being afraid to let what needs to emerge emerge rather than projecting on it yourself, okay? I feel like at the moment... At this time of the Scorpio full moon, the universe will assist you because it's a full moon, which is an emerging truth type vibe. It's scorpionic, which means no avoiding the difficult, what I call the bottom of the sewer, you know. Scorpio ain't afraid to flush out the drains. But also I feel like that's all you have to do at the moment. You don't have to fact check. You don't have to know. You don't have to be right. You don't have to be accurate necessarily. You just have to be open and willing and able to put aside the ego and the projection and to... Oh, Valentine wants to come in. <laughs> and to um, see be open to what emerges, literally be open to the power of the truth outside of yourself, but also inside yourself. So between you and the universe as a link, okay? I'm gonna take one Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. Oh, wow. We're going to take three Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. By the way, do sign up for my newsletter. You get a free pick a card reading, which does dovetail with this really well. It's a destiny reading, choice of three different piles. Link is in the description box, completely free. And I will be doing, it's, it's an exclusive video, and I will be doing, I think, shadow readings for the subscribers to that as well. Interesting. The Dreamwalkers. Dreams, collective good and illusions. And this is where we're stumbling about in terms of our own projections, okay? The fire prints, that's come up loads recently. Optimism and aggression. I feel like that's the energy of that Sagittarius um, eclipse. And Gaia's garden, that's lush. Fruition. Reaping what you sow and abundance. I don't believe that comes in until this is like a full circle, which I think will be, I'm starting to do the June readings at the moment. They're pretty juicy. Um, there's a lot going on in June, but this is the gateway to it, like we said yesterday, okay? And then we end here with the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles 
The Tranquil Spotted Doe. Oh, I love that. Venus in Virgo, it's becoming utterly accountable for yourself. What's mine? What is yours? What's my ego? What is true? Let it bubble up and emerge, okay? Oof. Do leave me a comment, do subscribe to the channel and check out the readings that are in the description box. There's loads more videos. Follow me on Instagram, Gemstone Tarot. I'll see you soon. Namaste.